Hey yo, what's going on boys? Mike here back with another video. So for today guys, we'll be doing a tips and tricks slash guide on those who remain. Now this will go over the main highlights of the game and this won't cover every little small like tips I could give you in the game though, but it shall help you out while you're grinding up for like that M60 or uh, the RPK for example. Now with that being said, if you want to see some more videos on those who remain, hit that like button boys, join the discord in the description down below. We have a whole community there if you're looking for others to play with. That being said, let's dive straight into this. Now I do want to mention before you guys say why did I get the flamethrower, it's my personal preference alright. Most of you guys will be grinding up for the M60 or the RPK. Now. For my personal choice, I feel like it's just more fun to play with the flamethrower. I feel like every single player in those are main grinds for the M60. And although the M60 is crazy good, if you want to have some fun with the game, let's be real here. Like the grind process in this game is crazy long and the flamethrower is one of the most unique weapons in the game. Very fun to play with. You also get some cool animations with the zombies as you burn them with the flamethrower. But anyways, as many of you guys play TWR, the main goal is to get the M60. Now, you want to set some mini goals for yourself and try to unlock these little like minor weapons to help you achieve that main goal of the M60. For me especially, I didn't buy every single weapon after it became available for myself. It'll save you a lot of money. For example, I used the MAC-10 all the way up to get the PDW, which is I believe a level 16 weapon. Um, like I've mentioned, the cheaper the price will go down the more you are closer to that level of that weapon and uh, i didn't have to wait till i'm level 16 i just saved up directly uh for it and then from this weapon a level 16 weapon i went all the way up to the lwrc which you're viewing right here now many of you guys should get the rpk i i would suggest that you get the rpk but like i said i just i just love the scope on this one and i went straight up for the lwrc both are very good weapons i would say that many of you would probably like the rpk more it's really all just personal preference between the RPK and the LWRC. But uh, from the RPK, you do want to grind up from the RPK all the way up to the M60. And then once you have the M60, it's a game over. You pretty much won the game and uh, this this will take you over for a very clean victory. Um, I am an old player of TWR and they made the waves a lot easier nowadays. So yeah, the M60 should easily take you over to that wave 15. Back then, the zombies used to be crazy at early waves at like level 7 and 8. But now... They, for some reason, made it much easier for you guys. Um, don't worry about secondaries or melees. Like, I didn't even touch melees that much. Like, as you see, level 10. Um, you don't need to go crazy with the melees or secondaries. Focus on the primary. The primary is your primary. And you'll be using that for the majority of your kills. Maybe a secondary just preserve some ammo at the start. Um, you could play around with it. I wouldn't go very... I wouldn't, like, grind all the way up for the Desert Eagle. You'd... Try to get something cheap and um the tech nine was a pretty good one um serbu shotgun too if you have that is a very good choice um that being said like i said don't invest much into it focus on primary all right so for the next thing is taking advantage for the perks um they're here for a reason to help you and guide you through that battle now for me personally as a level 52 these three perks helped me out crucially and if you are a level 60 definitely hit up that adrenaline rush that adrenaline rush will help you big time um of course if you're level 100 i don't even know what you're doing watching this video <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that the people watching this video is like maybe around level 10s 20s but uh yeah if you're high level you probably know all this stuff but uh, definitely hit up the perks they'll help you out big time all right so now that we got the loto and perks out of the way you're ready for war now i do want to mention this is wave 14 on expressway from wave one all the way to like wave eight it should be very easy a breeze for most of you and um until you get to the later rounds, that's where it gets a little hard. I do want to mention though, you want to save any 50 cals that you get from those helicopters for the final waves. Now, in case for an emergency, you could play some wave 14, but it's highly suggested that you save it for wave 15. The wave 15 is crucial if it could come in clutch and you could place it down. And when you are placing it down, do not just spam it out. Click when you're using that... Uh, 50 cal preserve as much ammo as you can now i do want to mention with supplies the molotov is probably the most crucial supply out of the three that you have you have one that slows enemies down or zombies i should say rather then you have your grenade and then you have the molotov save the molotov and throw it down when you're running do not throw it behind yourself throw it in front of yourself and then walk through it because the zombies will chase you and then they'll go right into the molotov so that's a pretty cool neat trick that you guys should be doing when you have that molotov and i do want to say though 
The bar of wires in the game is a very crucial fortifier that wins a lot of these waves and it does help because it slows down these zombies and it does crucial damage. It doesn't do significant damage but it does come in clutch because it does lower them down and when you have multiple that's why that perk comes in when you have times two of it and it'll give you double and then boom you can place down four barbed wires sideways because the zombies will travel in that manner. Now what I like doing and you'll tell because you'll be seeing the gameplay is I'll be going into the battle and I'll be coming out of the battle as soon as I run low on ammo or if I need more health. This is because I don't want to just be sitting here doing nothing for the entire wave as my teammates are in the front lines. You want to be getting that XP, getting those cash by killing some zombies and uh, you don't want to also stay at the front because if you stay at the front you're 100% going to die. You want to balance out the both, uh, both sides of the equation and you want to be doing like scavenging and then into the battle scavenging and then into the battle and it should give you some good xp especially in those later waves when they clump up and a thing like the flamethrower will get you so much money when they clump up and you'll all you need to do with the flamethrower is just tap it too because it'll spread through that one spur of fire when you tap moving on to objectives they are significant when it comes to xp now you do not want to be doing these objectives if you're in like wave 14 or 15 any other wave you're fine to do the objective now if the objective is all the way at your spawn then for sure do it if it's like a radio call for the helicopter but if you if the helicopter let's just say it's another map if it's outside the building and you gotta go travel far and these zombies are hella fast yeah you might as well not do it unless it's like i said it's one of those lower wave rounds where the zombies aren't as fast um Obviously in this wave here, we did do the helicopter at the start and then uh, there was a second one, but uh, you don't want to do that second one. It's way too up there for a map like this on an expressway, very close space and the zombies will get to you if you do want to stand on that uh, circle. But doing objectives is something I highly suggest for the higher waves. Make sure you guys do them and you'll get a lot of XP. Final thing I do want to mention is try to camp somewhere in the map depending on what type of map it is if you could all converse in the server and figure out where you want to like station up those traps and uh, gadgets uh that's a very good thing because in those later waves like expressway there's not much areas to camp unless you fall all the way back sometimes i set up like a last barrier defense you'll see me place down like two barbed wires at the start of the wave there just in case things go south and we need to fall all the way back for other buildings and such or maps you could find buildings to camp in and place those traps uh before things get bad because you don't want to be placing these traps as soon as the zombies start to breach you want to do it ahead of time so it saves you a lot of time and health in case things go bad that pretty much wraps up this video guys hopefully this helps i know this isn't every single bit of tips and tricks that you could do in this game if you guys want me to make a part two let me know in the comment section down below as always the discord links in the description down below if you're trying to find a community full of players to play with that's a perfect place to go to that being said guys i'm out have a good day